Welcome to your CCPS Science Review Lab. Today, we're going to touch on the hydrosphere and the atmosphere. So let's just do a quick warm up on the hydrosphere by talking about the water cycle. What parts of the water cycle do you think are occurring in this picture? Well, we know we have clouds and we've got a reservoir of water. Maybe it's a lake or um, an inlet of some sort. I also see plants in the background and I know plants use water and they transpire or release um, water through their stomata. So I see a bunch of different things going on. And the one thing that we know in remembering about the water cycle is that it is very dependent upon our atmosphere, right? It's dependent upon winds. It's dependent upon um, the processes of evaporation and condensation. And that can all happen in our atmosphere. And we know that if you put all that atmosphere and hydrosphere stuff together, what you come up with is our weather. Weather is obviously the conditions that occur in a place at a single time. You can look out your window right now and you can see the weather. Agreed? So where does our weather come from? Well, let's talk a little bit about air currents. Okay. Do you remember the name of the big one that's shown on my map? That's the jet stream. The jet stream works like a river of air coursing through our atmosphere. It goes from west to east. Now we know that our planet tends to be warmer around its bulgy parts of the around the equator and colder up at the poles. And we know that because of the the amount of sunlight it gets, whether it be direct, the more direct the sunlight, the warmer the area is. So these equatorial areas end up with being warmer because they get more direct sunlight and the poles are cooler because they get less sunlight. Now this band of air, this air current that we call the jet stream, acts sort of as a buffer between this warm air on the bottom and this cooler air on top. Now I want you to pay very close attention to my mouse as I'm explaining this. We see that the jet stream kind of goes bendy bendy here where it dips down like this section here allows cooler air from up north to sink lower. So when this jet stream dips like this, it allows these areas down here to become a little bit cooler. When the jet stream has an area like this one over here, that's raised up. It allows the warmer air from down here to swoop up. So from that perspective, this air current here, the jet stream is going to impact weather patterns, both in the north and the south, because depending upon its movement, it's going to either allow warm or cold air to get to certain places. Okay. In addition to that, because we have that warmer area down around the equator and that cooler area up top, we get sort of convection currents moving around. See, you can see this idea over here. You get sort of like this convection-y thing happening because you have that warmer air moving more northern. It's cooling and then it drops back down. So you get weather patterns based on those winds bringing in the clouds, bringing in those fronts as well. Now let's talk about ocean currents because ocean currents also impact our weather. The biggest ocean current that we talk about is our Gulf Stream. Again, we're going to talk about the fact that down here, right along the Tropic of Cancer and south of that, those areas tend to have fairly relatively warm water when compared to these areas in the north around Iceland or Greenland or maybe around the British Isles. So what happens is this ocean current will take this warmer water like what we see down in Florida and it will bring it up to this area here, warming those areas. Then that current is obviously going to sink back down and rewarm and come up. So you're going to see that again, that convection and 
looking like thing going on. So I need you to remember about the Gulf Stream. That's the ocean current that's going to affect our weather patterns. And I need you to remember about the jet stream. That was the air current that's going to affect our weather. Now, let's take a look at this while we're talking about how currents affect our weather. Okay, we know again that we have warmer areas close to the equator, cooler areas up north. So we have, when we're talking about storms that are being developed like hurricanes, okay, those hurricanes are going to get caught in those currents and carried. All right, so we've got that nice warm air down here and it's going to come around this way. And if that's got a hurricane on it, it's going to travel this way. And maybe it's going to end up in the Gulf of Mexico or maybe it's going to get caught in that Gulf Stream and get moved up along the East Coast. Okay, so again, these ocean currents and these air currents are very important to us because they drive the weather that we have. They drive our weather patterns. Now that we've talked about that, let's go ahead and give you an opportunity to show what you know. Here we have a chart. It shows average monthly precipitation, so the amount of rain that Key West gets every year. On my y-axis, I have the amount of rain measured in inches. And then on my x-axis, I have the months. Now, it's probably not going to surprise you to find out that June and August and September are pretty heavy precipitation months. What I would like you to do is explain to me why Florida gets so much more rain in the summer months than in the winter months. Now, I would like you to use your vocabulary in talking about the water cycle. I would like you to use the vocabulary that we talked about when it comes to air currents and ocean currents. Okay, here's your chance to show what you know. Good luck.